treating Lauren. Lauren has severe acne or had severe acne and um, also Lauren's a bit of a picker. So what has come up from picking and also from the inflammation of the spots is pigmentation. So it's important to understand that this pigmentation is not just epidermal pigmentation, it's caused from the inflammation from bacteria being in the area. So until you clear the spots, you're not going to clear the pigmentation. So we brought Lauren in, um, she's been on her full skincare routine for the last four weeks and we've done some superficial peels and we've done one medium depth peel. So the medium depth peel is just working a little deeper into the skin. It's using a Jesner. Jesner is a combination of three different acids to specifically target the bacteria and target the oil in the skin and stimulate new skin cell renewal. So we're gonna do the Jesner on her today so you can get an example what a therapist can do with, um, we're using Dermaquest today, so it's a superficial to medium depth peel with Dermaquest. So it'll give you an idea of what you can do, what you're looking for, how to control the peel, and what you're treating. So we're gonna first start off with our cleanse. This is the glycolic cleanser from Der Dermaquest. Now even though we've prep been prepping her skin for the last two weeks, we also need to make sure that any oil or dirt or bacteria that's there on the surface has to be taken off first. So we need to do a nice deep cleanse. So always when you're cleansing, you're working into the skin, um, just to get into, working into the skin layers, into the oil, into the dirt to get underneath. Because this has a little bit of glycolic as well, it helps eat away at the dead skin cells. So it means once we put on the acid, it works a lot better on the skin. So it's important with your clients that you're prepping their skin properly, that you're building them up. Lauren obviously suffers from the pigmentation from trauma, and if you go in with a really deep peel or medium depth peel straight away without prepping their skin, you can cause more inflammation and more pigmentation. So it's important to remember that. So this will feel a bit tingly on their skin, it's fine. When you're using a peel, the best thing to do with water is have it tepid you're using acids on their skin that can make their skin feel hot or warm so using a hot uh, bowl of water isn't going to feel nice on their skin so one that's just slightly less than lukewarm make sure getting up to the edge of the hairline as well make sure it's all cleared out Be careful when you're going over tattooed eyebrows. Acids can break down the superficial parts of the ink. So it means it can lighten it over time. And if your client is using acids at home, this will ha also happen to them. So we're gonna do a double cleanse. So our second cleanse, we've got off the superficial dirt and now we're working a bit more into the skin. So after the peel then, her skin will take a couple of days to peel. Um, as it's a superficial to medium peel, it's lovely for a day or two and then slowly, slowly dries out and then the skin starts to peel. Once it starts to peel, um, you have to make sure the client doesn't pick. It, because what you'll do is you'll take away the layer of the skin too early and that'll create a new uh, layer of skin along with pigment because once again you've traumatised the skin. Now before any acid goes on, you have to make sure the acid is going to penetrate evenly, um, not too quickly in some areas so it reacts, and also that will penetrate well into the skin. So to do that, with any skin peel company, you'll use what's called a prep. So sometimes this can be alcoholic wipes, um, it can be alcohol toners, but you have to stick with what your uh, product line gives you. So what we're doing is, we're doing a good swipe. We're not overlapping because we want this to be evenly distributed. And we're making sure to get good pressure to degrease the area and take any of the oil off. And you can see it's getting a little bit red on the skin. Now 
Now, I can see that there's still some residue on her skin, skin of makeup or SPF deep within her skin. So now I'm going to do another swipe of that. So fresh gauze. I like to use rough gauze because it means it exfoliates the skin a little bit. So it means the primer penetrates a little bit better. So this is a modified Jesner that we're using. I love this because it works amazingly on acne skin. So before you apply your peel, you have to remember your peel can spread. So what we need to do is protect the sensitive areas of the skin first. So we're going to apply a barrier cream onto the corners of the eyes because you don't want to go too close and the skin's a bit sensitive there. Corners of the mouth because you don't want your lips to crack. And then corner of the nose. Now you also wanted to be able to get near the oily part of your nose, so just underneath. So now we're going to apply the acid. What we're using is the modified Jesner. Um, this is brilliant because it has resorcinol in it, which helps dry out bacteria. It has um, and get rid of excess oil. It has salicylic, which is antibacterial and anti-inflammatory, and it also has lactic in it, which will also help um, actually hydrate the skin and it's anti-inflammatory as well. So we're using one pad. If you are not careful with this, you will do a second layer over the first layer, you'll overlap. And that means that acid in that area is going to go much deeper. So we're watching out from chin to ear to just make sure that we're overlapping. Now I folded the gauze in half to make to ensure that it doesn't um, go anywhere else. I don't want it to. So we've done one half of the cheek. We're going to do just the forehead. You can start on the forehead as well. Um, I always start off and draw on cheek just because um, on thicker skin and oilier skin, it'll have a little bit more time to work. But if it's more sensitive skin, start off in the forehead. So now the gauze has applied a lot of the acid to one side of the face. So we need to reapply the acid to that gauze to ensure that it's the exact same amount that's going on the other side of the face. So fold it in half and working out slowly and not overlapping. forehead as well. Now we need to do the nose and just up the middle and that's it. So on a scale of 1 to 10 Lauren how's that feeling? Like a 1. Okay so Lauren's well able used to being in the industry she's used to these treatments so she's obviously not going to feel as much. So we're just watching out on the skin for the frosting which you can see just around the spots here and we're making sure the skin is nice and cool and not getting too hot so because we've done the Jesna already means that her skin is well prepped so it means that um, we can do a second layer this time around so this is left till two minutes until it calms down and then you reapply the second layer. So you have to start off in the same area to make sure it's even. So straight out. Okay. And the forehead. And we're going to reapply. We also can see there's a good bit more frosting just in those areas. Okay. 
So we're going to apply a third layer. With this third layer, but I'm, I'm looking at the skin now, I can see that she's frosted a tiny bit on her chin and just along here. So I'm going to avoid that one. So we're going to start off in this area again. Forehead. Now we're coming around to this side. This area has frosted quite a bit. So I want to make sure that I'm not over treating such certain areas. So I'm going to avoid that frosting. Okay, so this is the final layer of the Besner. Um, as with Dermaquest, this is the most you can do. Now, Jesner is a, this Jesner solution is a self neutralizing solution. So what that means is we don't need to rebalance the pH, it does it itself. Um, so we're going to apply a retinol after this and then an SPF. So we're now we're applying the retinol solution. This helps the penetration of the acid and helps the cell renewal. So this will be lovely for warm skin. Keep her bright, glowing skin. And the last thing we have to do is SPF. Now, what we're going to advise Lauren is to... She's now created heat or stimulated her skin. So obviously she doesn't want to go doing exercise, um, wash her face in hot water, have a shower, sauna, steam room, anything like that that will create heat in her skin. She's not allowed to pick at her skin and touch it and she's better off leaving off makeup for the next 24 to 48 hours. Your skin will look lovely this evening Lauren, nice and glowy yes. and then in two days time it's going to start peeling. It'll peel for about three to five days in big flakes. So what you're not to do is you're not to pick at them but um, you need to make sure that you're wearing your sun factor at all times because now your skin is going to be more sensitive to the sun. And we just pat it in, the heat warms up the zinc so it blends in with the skin. And our skin is nice and glowy afterwards. No exfoliators, AHAs, retinols or anything like that for the next uh, 72 hours.